All right, today we have this bad boy in the house. This is the TT Artisans uh, 56 millimeter f 1.8 and it's a pretty good lens. And I think this is going to serve a lot of you guys out there who is looking for this focal length, but you can't justify paying the higher prices from the other brands. I'm looking at you, Fujifilm. Freaking thousand dollars break. If you're, if you're familiar with the TT Artisans 35mm f1.8, the build is more or less the same with this lens right here. It looks exactly the same. We got a nice metal construction right here. However, the manual focusing ring feels a bit loose for my liking. And at the back of the lens, you have the digital contacts, which is pretty cool to see from a third party, a once third party manual lens company. Now they're adding digital contacts. You also have the USB-C port for the firmware updates on the back of the cap. It's not on the lens, which is really in a, a creative way to not open the back of your lens maybe however i do not like this back cap right here it's just too loose it does not feel satisfying to twist it feels easily bumpable so like <laughs> bumpable you know on the road like it just takes a few bumps and it gets like knocked out like it's so fucking easy like 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 come on man this should be a lot harder to twist, untwist. So I'm not really a fan of that. Uh, like again, it doesn't feel secure. So TT Artisan also provides you with a lens hood right here as well. The thing about the lens hood is you gotta remove this cap to use it. Otherwise, if you twist it in with the cap, you're not, you're not be able to take it out. So just, just do that and you'll be fine. And this is what it looks like with the hood on. Look at that. Now you look like a full on hipster with the square hood. Now again, this is a 85 millimeter full frame equivalent lens and this focal length is great for portrait photography. I found the autofocusing to be decent at single AF. When we get into AFC, this is where like the problem begins. Uh, it tracks the eyes, but there are times where I just felt it didn't get the closest eyes to the camera. And I don't know if this is more to do with the Fujifilm X-T5 or the lens itself. It doesn't feel as confident at times. Uh, and there are times where it works quite well and I was happy to use it. And in these examples, I tried to shoot each image just stop down to see how well the lens sharpened up. The autofocusing was supposed to get the eye and I saw the, I saw the green box confirmation on the eye but it chose to get the ring instead. So I recommend just using single point autofocusing for more accurate results. Hopefully this could be improved with uh, future uh, firmware updates. Now let's move on to the image quality. At f1.8, the images are pretty sharp surprisingly. Is it as sharp as something like the 56, the Fujifilm 56 millimeter f1.2 and f1.8? And the answer to that is, no. <laughs> but given given that the price of the, 50, the Fuji 56 millimeter is like a thousand bucks you would expect it to be better in sharpness performance but for something of this price the tt artisan performs very well and i'm quite impressed the bokeh looks very smooth and very clean and what is surprising is i haven't found many chromatic aberrations i found very little so I would say the chromatic aberration on this lens is very well controlled. I do like the images uh, I've been taking at f1.8. The compression looks nice and once you stop it down to like f4, you're going to get sharper images and it's going to look really, really good. There is a little bit of ghosting whenever the light hits the lens. So you just got to be mindful of where you point this thing as well. Now let's talk about the one thing that I do like about this lens and that is the close focusing distance. It is at 50 centimeters, which is pretty good for something of this focal length. Uh, just to put it into perspective, the Fujifilm XF 56mm f1.2 Mark, Mark 1 has a close focusing distance of 70 centimeters, and the Mark 2 version, the WR version, has a close focusing distance of 50 centimeters, which I also praised in that review. I said I really like how close that how close that lens can get but this is great if you want to just get closer to the subject maybe you want to get a little bit more intimate feel with a shot that you have in mind or you just want to get close enough to get some more separation from the background you can uh, you can achieve it this way as well just by getting closer because of the close focusing distance so what are the cons now i have to reiterate i do not like the back the back of the mount cap it's not secure at all and i swear if i'm not complaining about like you know third parties uh, uh, third-party lenses and their lens cap 
its third-party lenses and their back cap. So they can never get it right, like ever. <laughs> Another thing that you may find as a deal breaker or not is there's no aperture ring. Now, some may find this as a deal breaker, but I really don't care about it that much. And again, the autofocusing. The autofocusing can be a bit wonky sometimes. The AF tracking, the autofocusing continuous is not as where it should be. It's not that good. AF single point, pretty good. Can't complain. This needs to be tightened up and I hope that they would fix this in like future firmware update. But overall, I think given the price to performance ratio, this lens performs very well. I, I think anyone who is starting out and that doesn't want to pay for more of that portrait focal length because those lenses are freaking expensive. Just know that you have a budget friendly option in this lens right here. And I think this lens will fill that void. As of this moment, I don't have the price. I'm just gonna take a well-educated guess here and assume that it's going to be a lot cheaper than the other brands is with this focal length. If I have the price, I will put it up right here somewhere. If not, you can check the links down in the description below for when that price is going to come out. But yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Uh, do you think this is something that you're worth buying? People who are getting into portrait photography, I know the Sigma can be expensive for a few people. The the native one obviously is like expensive for a few people. I think even the Viltrox one may be a little bit more expensive than this lens. Maybe. So yeah, I think this is going to be great for people that want to dabble uh, in portrait photography, that wants uh, that lens compression, that wants an f1.8 lens, that wants a good image quality for a fraction of the price. I, I enjoyed using it. I'm quite surprised by it. And TT Artisan, again, great job with this lens. But yeah, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. Consider subscribing for more gear content review like this and I want to give a special shout out to TT Artisan for sending me for sending this lens out for a review. Thanks.